Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. Between Sony addressing the infamous storage issue by including an SD card slot and the availability of emulators for players to experience titles from other platforms, the PS Vita remains relevant, even today, alongside powerhouses like the PS5 and Xbox Series X in the market. However, the Vita is often considered among the most underrated gaming consoles of all time, mainly due to the lack of proper marketing and a few other reasons. Nevertheless, this doesn't have any bearing on its game library, which boasts several several hidden gems. For those who own a Vita or are considering getting one, here's a list of our top 50 underrated Vita games. East Origin In this action RPG, the magical realm of East is overrun by demons. The twin goddesses, Rhea and Fina, use the power of the holy artifact, the Black Pearl, to lift a part of the land to the heavens. Demons construct the Dharm Tower to take the battle to the skies. Amidst the chaos, the twin goddesses leave for the surface without informing their subordinate priests. With the goddesses being Issa's last hope, the priests gather three of the kingdom's best knights and send them to Darm Tower to secure the goddesses. Neon Falcom's first non-PC release, East Origin is the franchise's initial prequel. Players can choose to play as one of the three warriors, Unica, the hack and slash axe wielder, Hugo, the shooter, and Toll, the unlockable character. Each character offers a distinct fighting style and unique battle mechanics. Although the tutorials may appear lengthy initially, players are likely to change their minds within 10 minutes of gameplay. The immersive and fast-paced gameplay keeps players too engaged to question the graphics. You might find yourself becoming frustrated due to the game's difficulty, even on easy mode. Skull Girls In the enigmatic realm of the Canopy Kingdom lies an ancient artifact known as the Skull Heart. This artifact possesses the power to grant a woman her deepest wish, provided she's pure of heart. However, there's a chilling catch. The artifact also carries a malevolent curse that transforms the corrupt into monstrous entities known as Skull Girls. Within this world, fighters clash in a quest to unravel the secrets of the Skull Heart, leading to the revelation of character motivations and origin stories. The narrative weaves a tale of vengeance, redemption, and the relentless pursuit of ultimate power. The game's distinctive, hand-animated art style draws heavy inspiration from classic 1940s and 1950s cartoon animation. While some players turned a blind eye to the game's suggestive themes, many dismissed it due to its cartoonish art style. The title faced challenges, including Konami's lawsuit issues and the core development team's transition from Lab Zero games to Future Club. It was also often overshadowed by other prominent 2D fighting games like Street Fighter 4 and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. However, those who have witnessed the gameplay can't help but feel intrigued by it. The controls and tag team character support are easy to grasp, and the combat system has propelled it into popularity within the esports scene. Lost Dimension Set in a dystopian future, Sealed follows a special team of psychics aged 17 to 18, led by Sho Kasugai, who are assembled to prevent the world's destruction at the hands of the end. As the story unfolds, a colossal structure known as the Pillar becomes the battleground where the main antagonist challenges the team. The challenge involves voting off one suspected traitor from the group at each level of the Pillar. Within the time frame of each level, Sho must discern the traitor's identity and make the decisive vote. This tactical RPG offers a unique gameplay experience as the outcome can vary depending on which character is voted off. Any traitors who manage to survive the voting process eventually turn against the team during the final level. Developed by Lancas, a relatively smaller studio, the game's release suffered from poor timing, leaving it to be overshadowed by other releases. Apart from its engaging storyline, intricate character relationships and innovative gameplay mechanics, Lost Dimension is also strategy-based. Unlike other games in the genre that use grid-based systems, Lost Dimension allows players to execute individual and combo attacks within the proximity of teammates. The inclusion of combo attacks adds depth, as the team's strength becomes contingent on character positioning and the strategic choices players make. Fate Extella, The Umbral Star A sequel to the Holy Grail War in Fate Extra, this Musu title stands out as one of the more visually appealing PS Vita games. Players assume the roles of their customizable masters, operating through their servant spirits to vie for dominance over the virtual realm of Seraph. The central narrative revolves around Nero and Tamamo from Fate Extra. In a clash for control over the Moon Cell, while Altera conspires to destroy the world. Saber, however, fights for peace. Throughout the game, players engage in battles and make pivotal decisions that significantly impact the fate of their chosen faction. The side story mode provides additional depth for fans eager to explore the lore of the universe. The Fate franchise originally began as a visual novel series by Type Moon, and this game expands upon the established lore. While some players appreciate the fusion of hack and slash action with visual novel storytelling, others have cited issues with frame rate drops. Nonetheless, the game's mechanics and control seem tailored to Vita gamers, to the extent that some players might even prefer the Vita version over the PS4 edition. Each servant boasts unique battle mechanics, which, coupled with the game's strategic elements like territory control, ensures a diverse experience with each playthrough. Shinobido 2 
Revenge of Zen. As the name suggests, Shinobido 2 is a tale of vengeance. Zen is the skilled protagonist ninja who was betrayed by childhood friends when they murdered his partner, San. To enact his revenge, Zen starts working for various clans as a ninja for hire, all of which are at war with each other. The game lets you play certain non-story missions as Keidi, a Kunoichi ally of Zen. It plays out like a political power struggle and loses a few points due to the fact that Zen would carry out a mission against one clan and then be hired by that very clan to carry out a mission against another. Zen and San, of course, are victims of this political feud. On the upside, in spite of the somewhat loosely knit story that gamers criticize, players get the choice to approach missions stealthily, sneaking past enemies, using a disguise, and mastering gadgets like the grappler. You can also choose from a variety of missions including assassinations, kidnappings, and heists. A player's choice of missions affects political relations between clans and decisions that one might make throughout the game and can lead to different endings. Tales of Hearts R. Tales of Hearts R is an action RPG title that remains underrated despite being a part of the Tales series, primarily due to its status as a Vita exclusive. Initially available only in Japan on the Nintendo DS, the game's narrative follows the experiences of Core Meteor as he encounters Kohaku and her brother, Hisui. The duo is on the run from a mysterious woman named Inka Rose, who later attacks Kohaku. Core attempts to save her using his Soma, an ancient weapon he inherited but knew little about. This results in the shattering of Kohaku's spirit with its pieces, representing Kohaku's feelings scattered across the worlds of Organica and Minera. The trio embarks on a mystical journey to restore Kohaku's spiria. What truly sets this game apart is its concept. Throughout their quest to mend Kohaku's spirit, the group learns valuable lessons about love, friendship, and sacrifice, giving the game a wholesome feel. The Vita remake features fully rendered character models in 3D environments and an aerial chase linear motion battle system with a chase link mechanic that allows for combos and follow-up attacks while an enemy is airborne. Exist Archive – The Other Side of the Sky Tri-Ace and Spike Chunsoft's Exit Archive follows the story of a group of 12 high school students who lose their lives in an explosion, only to find themselves in a mysterious land, the fantastical planet of Protolexa. The students embark on a journey to explore this world, seeking answers, battling strange creatures, and occasionally solving puzzles while the game plays in a 2D side-scroll format. However, the game has faced significant criticism for its menu-like map system that allows players to choose their next destination. While many of these destinations, including the adversaries, are beautifully designed. They tend to look similar and can become repetitive over time. Things become interesting during combat, which unfolds in phases. Players engage in battles as teams of four, and each member can be assigned a button on the Vita controller. The characters perform their respective offensive or defensive actions when the player hits their buttons. This combat setup adds both challenge and intrigue to the gameplay, enabling players to strategically plan their attacks and defenses, thereby allowing them to orchestrate the best possible offense and defend against the most fatal blows. The caveat lies in the fact that each character has their own set amount of action points, and if these points are depleted before the guard phase, the player is left defenseless. Tactical RPG Vita fans wouldn't want to miss out on this experience. Dust Force. Whether you're a casual gamer looking to unwind or a hardcore competitive speedrunner aiming to break records, both would agree on the excellence of Dust Force. In a world consumed by literal filth, players take on the role of janitors determined to clear each level of the grimy mess. The base game features four playable janitors, surprisingly skilled at parkour, and offers over 50 levels. Player performance is assessed based on how quickly you clear a level, the number of cleaning combo points you accumulate, and anything that makes your performance stylish. The game allowed the Hitbox development team to double in size before Capcom picked it up for a console release. Capcom recognized that the game blended the run and jump mechanics of Mega Man the hack and slash of Strider, and the precise 1v1 combat of Street Fighter. While some felt that the repetitiveness wasn't worth the steep learning curve and challenging mechanics, others embraced it for its mindless fun. Dust Force is one of those light-hearted, enjoyable-to-play games that can also become intensely engaging, offering an enjoyable experience for everyone. Lone Survivor Praised for its crisp, atmospheric storytelling with apparent nods to Twin Peaks, this survival horror title follows a 2D side-scrolling format and is set in a post-apocalyptic world. Everyone's infected by what appears to be a zombie virus, and the story centers on an unnamed protagonist who runs out of supplies in his apartment. The protagonist, not wanting to die alone, sets out to find food, weapons, and other survivors. Lone Survivor blurs the line between reality and a traumatized man's hallucinations by incorporating textbook horror elements like isolation, sound, 
sound, inadequate lighting, and distorted storytelling. During your supply runs, you can choose to either fight or stun the zombies using guns and a flashlight, or you can try to avoid them by using your environment, making the game open-ended and creative. It also offers a good number of puzzles that require solid resource management. If you can overlook the side-scrolling format, pixelated graphics, and gaps in the story, you might just find yourself placing this game on your list of horror favorites, even today. And that's saying something, considering the presence of horror giants like Silent Hill, Outlast, and Resident Evil. R in the Surge Plus, Ode to an Unborn Star While we're talking about unique JRPG titles, it would be unethical not to mention the Seal No Surge sequel, R No Surge. This one is notable not just because it was developed by Gust, the developer of the Atelier games, but also because it breaks the fourth wall and puts you in the role of the main character. Ra Ciela, the home of humans, was destroyed, forcing them to take to the stars in search of a new home. The game primarily takes place on a large space station called Felion, which humans share with the Shals. The Shals, similar to Sirens, use song magic to lure and attack humans. Players follow one of two pairs of ancient non shal Felian characters, and each pair has a song magic wielder to help combat the Shars. The battle system works in turns. Players must attack with the non-song magic wielder while the meter fills up. Once the song magic finisher becomes powerful enough to eliminate all enemies, the battle ends. Both the attack and defense phases involve well-timed button interactions that give the game a polished feel. The game explores themes like love, shared histories, and self-reflection, providing the story with a philosophical touch. It was remastered and re-released in Japan along with CL No Surge on the Nintendo DS. Muramasa Rebirth With both of its main character storylines adding up to over 11 hours of gameplay, Muramasa Rebirth follows the stories of Momohime and Kisuke. The title is set in the Edo period and is intricately woven around Japanese folklore and the conflict over the demon blades. Momohime's body is possessed by a vengeful ronin spirit and she's on a quest to regain control over her body, while Kisuke suffers from amnesia and is being hunted by former ninja comrades for a crime he doesn't remember committing. The game's 2D hand-drawn art is a nod to Japanese culture and mythology. The side-scrolling levels exhibit a vertical form of storytelling that advances after each horizontal stage. Aside from its adventurous stories, the game exhibits breathtaking sprites and great sound effects. While it's criticized for the lack of enemy variety, the simple combat mechanics paired with challenging action are astonishing, and the environments are beautiful. Unfortunately, this hack-and-slash Vita port was overshadowed by titles like Odin Sphere and Dragon's Crown. Tokyo Sanadu. The next game's events take us to the fictional Morimaya City, where a bunch of high schoolers are recruited by Nemesis, a secret organization that operates to close dangerous portals in the city. These portals open into the desolate realm of Eclipse, a world inhabited by the Greeds, who want to wreak havoc in Tokyo. It starts when the lead character, Ku Tokisaka, catches his high school peer, Asuka Hiragi, with a suspicious group of people and follows them into an Eclipse portal. After witnessing the horrors that await on the other end of each portal, Ku joins Nemesis and they proceed to recruit more students from Morimaya Academy to fight the Greeds. The title receives heavy criticism over its cliché modern classic story, and the game's romancing aspects are even ridiculed in the community. If you patiently wait for the fighting to start, however, the game will surprise you. The 3D gameplay makes both the city of Morimaya and the Eclipse environment stand out. The battle setup makes it so that gamers can switch between three playable characters in every mission, each of which has its own set of abilities, styles, and weaknesses. In order to beat the game, you must evenly use all three characters, given that the missions are designed to be completed by the team as a whole. Danganronpa, another episode, Ultra Despair Girls. This renowned PS Vita cult classic tells the tale of Kamaru Naegi and Toko Fukawa as they try to escape from the deadly city overrun by children and Monokuma Teddy robots. The children aim to exterminate all adults while the rampaging robots promote a culture of killing. It's a sequel to the first Danganronpa game, and Kamaru's elder sister as well as Toko were first seen in that one. The story isn't difficult to understand even if you haven't played the first game. Kamaru, with a megaphone hacking gun, lets players enjoy a shooter experience while playing with Toko provides for the hack and slash fans. Aspects like Kamaru's hacking gun with its truth bullets and battery management, Toko's evolved genocide jack mode with her link gauge, and lastly the game's skill system add a certain depth to the action-based teddy killing experience. It's also worth mentioning that while the game doesn't achieve everything that it tries to achieve, especially since the Visa port neither offers anything new nor fixes old problems, it offers a lot in terms of fan service. Freedom Wars This long-forgotten hidden gem of a role-playing Vita exclusive packs an original dystopian idea inspired by George Orwell's Big Brother concept. The authorities are watching your every move and treat the masses as prisoners. The game follows the story of a customizable protagonist who's serving a million-year prison sentence. Our protagonist belongs to the category that society labels as sinners, for being a load on its dystopian shoulders. The sinners have to earn points by contributing to the state in fighting giant robots called abductors. They use these points to take years off their sentence 
sentence and earn basic rights. When it first came out, players assumed the whole point of this title was to play online, but the Orwellian concept of the story makes it far too interesting to sleep on. The campaign is dialogue heavy, even when it's uncalled for, and it becomes a deal breaker for a lot of gamers. On the upside though, this action RPG lets you attack the abductors using both guns as well as blades, making room for some really cool combos. The battle mechanics are flexible and let you go as far as climbing the huge enemies to deal more damage in your attacks. Escape Plan Escape Plan is a PS Vita game that excels at taking advantage of the console and its features. Players control the two characters, Lil and Larg, and guide them through all sorts of bizarre and macabre rooms with the goal of helping them escape. Failure to solve a puzzle results in death, and players wear the number of times they die on their torso like a medal. Escape Plan was the number one seller on PSN in April 2012 and IGN's favorite PS Vita title in 2011. One might wonder why such a renowned title is on this list, and the answer is quite simple. The PS Vita itself is underrated and when you put this path clearing, booby-trap diffusing title next to mainstream console giants, it doesn't seem as enticing. Designers use chiaroscuro techniques, which means strongly contrasting tones of black and white to take advantage of the Vita's OLED display. With its updates, the game's star rating system has improved based on player feedback. Players can now also tap on interactive blocks with pinpoint accuracy. The movement mechanics are on the slower side to emphasize the carefulness and patience that the game demands from its players. Counter-Spy. Set somewhere between the 1950s and 60s, with themes referring to the Cold War, this bold side-scroller was developed by Dynamite's small team of ex-LucasArts and Pixar employees. Players take on the role of a spy who works for an organization called Counter. This agency favors neither side and aims to sabotage both superpowers in the race for arms. Your goal is to stealthily prevent an untimely doomsday at the hands of either superpower to maintain world peace. The graphics are sharp, slick, and feature stylized visuals that bring the 50s and 60s to life. The side-scrolling is as smooth as the graphics are pleasing. The balance between stealth and action is just right, but the game exhibits a lack of depth. Nice graphics also mean the occasional frame drop on the Vita, but it isn't unbearable. Players can use both melee and ranged weapons, though the aiming area could be a bit larger for players to enjoy shooting and planning their next course of action. Zeo Drifter. Ported to the Vita in 2015, Renegade Kid Zeo Drifter follows an interstellar drifter whose ship collides with an asteroid and needs repairing. Players take on the role of this traveler, venturing to nearby planets in search of resources to return home. On these planets, they encounter hostile aliens and other threats, uncovering the galaxy's secrets in the process. The obstacle-infested Metroidvania title combines exploration and action, even allowing players to decide which planet to visit first. However, there's a catch. Players often find themselves inadvertently following the developer's intended path, as three out of four planets prove too challenging without power-ups obtained from the intended first planet. These power-ups enable access to new areas and further progress on a planet. While Zeo Drifter's snappy motion and shooting mechanics are praised, all four planets feature the same boss design, differing mainly in powers, which can make the experience feel repetitive. Mary Skelter Nightmares. Up next is a classic first-person dungeon crawler RPG. The plot opens with Jack and Alice at its center, as they escape from the cell they're imprisoned in with the help of a powerful red-hooded girl. The jail is an evil being that has taken over the city and has placed dangerous monsters called Martians all over it. Red Hood takes the freed prisoners to the Dawn HQ, which serves as the Blood Maidens hideout, and they join the Blood Maidens in their quest to free the city. To liberate a district, the Maidens must go into its dungeons and destroy its core. Each dungeon has a Nightmare, which is the level boss guarding it. The core must be destroyed before killing the nightmares. While it isn't mind-blowing, the game makes for fun gameplay and a decently put-together experience. The blood gauge is an important mechanic. All maidens have their own blood gauge, which fills as they perform various actions during battle. When used by the players, it activates Massacre Mode, dealing enhanced attacks to the enemy. If left unused, it activates Blood Skelter Mode, dealing damage to teammates and enemies alike. Character skills depend on the job that character has, and leveling up earns you skill points. The combat mechanism allows you to bring five maidens into battle and use their various abilities to defeat Martians and Nightmares. Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus R The 2D fighting game is known for its intricate fighting mechanics and was developed by Arc System Works. Its journey started in 2002 when it was released for arcades as Guilty Gear X2. This still serves as the base game for the latest update, with various adjustments made in each update to cater to various platforms. The game, despite its retro free fight appearance, features a story mode that was added in the Accent Core Plus update. The story plays out in the form of a visual novel with fights, encompassing the diverse characters in the Guilty Gear 
Gear universe and delving into their motivations and backgrounds. Accent Core Plus R includes well-appreciated balance changes along with minor tweaks to a few characters, while others were entirely reworked. This final update was heavily criticized as it took away the online mode. Nevertheless, it remains an excellent fighting game with top-notch fighting mechanics, modes, and design. Silent Hill – Book of Memories This Silent Hill spin-off is an action RPG and is among the most popular games released for the Vita. It starts on the day of your birthday when the player-created protagonist is gifted a book with all their life's memories recorded in it. The protagonist entertains a curious chain of thought and makes changes to their life's events, trying to imagine what might make their life better. However, the book's dark powers start to corrupt the protagonist's reality, sending them to confront the adverse effects of their changes while they dream at night. Book of Memories breaks Silent Hill's popular survival horror a format and allows players to enjoy a hack and slash adventure in a variety of dungeons, also making the title a dungeon crawler. It's a bit addictive and players want to keep leveling up and finding better items. Based on preference, players not only have the option to choose one of five character classes, but also a good variety of long or short range weapons to pick up in the game environment. Each character class accommodates different playing styles and helps players better prepare themselves for the waves of horror that await them. Dynasty Warriors – God Seekers Set to follow the romance of the Three Kingdoms narrative near the end of the Han era in China, Dynasty Warriors – God Seekers follows the story of warrior Zhao Yun and his childhood friend Lei Bin as they venture into a mysterious shrine in search of an adventure. Here they come across the ancient Lixia, who appears to be frozen in ice. They wake Lixia from her slumber in order to prevent the rebellious yellow turbans from getting to her. Lixia turns out to be a powerful mystic who channels power through her five elemental orbs. Upon waking up, she convinces the pair to to help her retrieve her orb so that she can return to the mystic realm. This strategy RPG, unlike other traditional turn-based RPGs, ditches the hack-and-slash combat and takes the form of a grid-based combat game with a top-down view. Even though they did things differently with the combat style, the story is quite like that of a traditional RPG. The developers experimented quite a bit with this one, but the game failed to live up to its full potential and feels shallow in comparison to others in the genre. On the upside, the battle mechanics and statistics are far more player-friendly. Grand Kingdom If you're into unique takes on classic strategy RPGs focused more on battle aspects like timing, environment, party building and character positioning than they do on the campaign, this forgotten gem is the one for you. In a spiritual sense, Grand Kingdom is a successor to Vanillaware's Grand Knight's history and follows the story of four nations at war with each other. Players play the role of mercenary leaders who operate in teams and take on quests and missions for the faction of their choice. The narrative is driven by in-game choices that gamers make and every quest is set up like a board game. You guide your characters around this board with different spots, either triggering battles and character interactions or discovering treasures and other resources. Battles play out in turns and lay an emphasis on character positioning. Your team consists of four playable characters whom you position in various battle formations. The tricky part is performing well-timed attacks and making use of your environment to defeat the enemies. Obstacles on the battlefield can also be used to both your advantage as well as your disadvantage. While this forgotten and overshadowed title is criticized for its lack of story focus, the plot does does get better gradually. Murasaki Baby This quirky and eccentric adventure puzzle-based title immerses you into an eerie world as you guide a little girl, whom the game refers to as Baby. This title shares some similarities with Escape Plan in terms of character mechanics and the incorporation of Vita-specific features. What makes this title stand out is that it offers up to three different abilities for each level, and the clever puzzle design lets players use these ability backdrops to clear the way and reach the end of each level safely. Baby carries with her a balloon, and if you let this balloon burst, it's an instant game over. You also acquire new ability backdrops by bursting other characters' balloons as and when you come across them. As a Vita exclusive, this title isn't very popular. The designers left no room for negotiation on their whimsical Tim Burton-esque artwork, whether it's Baby's upside-down face or her wacky obstacle-filled environment. The game makes good use of the Vita's front touchscreen for object interaction and the rear touchpad for switching ability backdrops. The character's movements are a little restrictive at times, but that makes sense given that she's a child. Atelier Dusk Trilogy The Dusk Trilogy of the Atelier franchise presents gamers with an agreed-upon way to play its three games. Atelier Aisha Plus, Atelier Escher and Logi Plus, and Atelier Shally Plus are all set in the desolate land of Dusk, a realm that's barely surviving. The lore incorporates elements of alchemy, and players roam the dying world, scouring it for resources to craft items like healing items, weaponry, armor equipment, and more. Many gamers in the community are familiar with the prequel Arland Trilogy, as it gave the franchise 
franchise some momentum. The Dusk trilogy on the Vita was ported as a plus version of all three games, including all the downloadable content and some additional character content on the side. However, for some reason, Ayesha didn't receive a physical release. Shelly features the best battle system with a more compelling story, while Esher and Logi bring a more personal vibe to the experience, along with cool, jazzy music. It's not difficult to get invested in all the characters from the Dusk trilogy, given how their stories begin with personal crises and low stakes, gradually leading to the discovery of secrets about the land of dusk. Bentley's Hack Pack When the world's greatest thieves from Sly Cooper Thieves in Time need to unwind and take a break, they head to the arcade. Bentley's Hack Pack is a standalone trio of hacking minigames. You play as Bentley the Turtle and enjoy one of three arcade games, System Cracker, Spark Runner and Alter Ego. We also see Sly, Murray, El Jeffy and some petty guard characters from Sly Cooper hanging around the arcade. While the minigames are fast-paced and fun, they might not be very fulfilling and tend to get repetitive. They cover the hacking aspect of Bentley's gameplay in Thieves in Time and have 20 levels each to beat each with five challenges per level. System Cracker, with its top-down view, is the most basic among the three. Players traverse an environment that's supposed to be a computer system in a tank that serves as your code and shoot down enemies that play the role of firewalls. Alter Ego is a side-scroll twin-stick shooter and features Bentley in the enemy's computer system, wreaking havoc with the binary package gun. Lastly, in Spark Plug, players must guide a spark to the central port of a computer's circuit board while collecting points and adding seconds to the countdown before the timer runs out. Salt and Sanctuary Deeply inspired by the Dark Souls series, Salt and Sanctuary is a 2D hand-drawn RPG that combines elements of Metroidvania and Souls-like game genres. The story begins when the customizable sailor protagonist finds himself shipwrecked on an island. The island is basically a mixtape of the game world's worst locations, held together by supernatural forces. On this island, the player must rescue a princess who's to be sacrificed to a nameless guard. There's an overwhelming amount of information on equipment, items, and stats, and much of this is often too small to read on the Vita. The fights however, are challenging. It features a great combat system with a bit of a learning curve, but it isn't overwhelming. The adventure is expansive, and world exploration is varied, with importance given to platforming. Try not to die too often though, because the enemies steal your salt, which you use for upgrades. Gundam Breaker 3 Gundam Breaker 3 allows you to step into the virtual world of the popular online game Gunpla Battle Nexus Online. GBN, where players make use of Gunpla models to fight against each other. The story of GB3 opens when a new GBN player, our protagonist, who is also new to the area, runs into Misa near the Ayato shopping arcade. This arcade is a market area that doesn't get as many customers since a modern store stole all its business. The two battle, and she is impressed by the player's skill. She invites the player into her new Gunpla battle team, which she started with the aim of winning competitions to make a name for the Ayato arcade and revive the market. Aspects like customization and combat have been tweaked to cater to players' preferences while retaining GB2's key mechanics. The combat mechanics are a lot like those of Dynasty Warriors, and this game becomes addictive as you start to collect parts and weapons. Though criticized for its repetitiveness, the vastness that the title provides in terms of customization makes it a must-play. Macross Delta Scramble For those who haven't watched the Macross Delta anime, this game is set in a dystopian future and tells the story of the Valkyrie Tactical Sound Unit, which teams up with Delta Flight, a private military unit, as they protect Ragnar, their planet, from the hostile VAR syndrome. The little things add up to damage this title's reputation. While a decent number of different characters show up, most of these lack differences in strengths, weaknesses and equipment. Encounters with enemies might seem uneventful. Repetitive events from the series combined with the easiness of the game didn't make for a fulfilling experience. The game, despite these shortcomings, makes for a great mindless stress buster and is fun to play. It's an absolute joyride through its anime series and serves players with a thrilling space action experience. Broken Sword 5 – The Serpent's Curse This 2D adventure game plays out in a third-person perspective as players guide George Stobart and Nicole Collard from the previous games in cracking a conspiracy surrounding a supposedly cursed painting and a robbery. The plot thickens a lot as the investigation takes them across Europe, and our protagonists soon find themselves rushing to save the world. Among the many gameplay elements that make this game unique is knowledge manipulation and making meaning of facts. Players can only proceed further if they're able to draw logical conclusions and can even die if they're decisions are wrong or their actions are ill-timed. This game takes the franchise back to its 2D roots, though the characters are 3D pre-rendered and work within 2D hand-drawn frames. The animations blend these 3D characters and their 2D environments really well. The name of the title does make it sound like more of an action game, which can lead new players to feel disappointed, as there's no fighting in the game.
Summon Knight 6, Lost Borders. In this strategy RPG, which explores the general theme of meeting new people in life, forming relationships with them, and accepting them for themselves, gamers witness the reunion of their favorite Summon Knight characters. The story mainly follows Raj, Amu, and Ist in the cocoon world of Fallujah. All three believe that they're the sole residents of their world, but this changes when the story begins. They also go on to discover a strange evil that haunts the world. Summon Knight 6 plays like a visual novel and features a very different level-up system, as it makes players decide how to divide earned points among their characters. Leveling up all characters isn't practical, and at the same time, it's important to have a balanced team while bearing in mind that certain characters play key roles in specific battles. In a grid and turn-based format, the battle system dives deep into specifics, and aspects like battle environments may contribute to or have adverse effects on character stats. These battlefields could have been better designed, and while the game as a whole won't blow you over, it sure is worth checking out. God Eater 2 God Eater 2 Rage Burst was released for the PS Vita following God Eater 2, and is set three years after God Eater Burst's events. Black Plague, a deadly pandemic, haunts the Far East branch, and the authoritarian organization of Fenrir forms its elite blood unit to assist. The blood elite unit operates in the mobile Friar base, and players play the role of an unnamed protagonist as Blood's newest recruit. The slow-paced game receives heavy criticism, as it sometimes feels like it doesn't explain the plot and mechanics, like upgrades and customization, as well as it should. Secondly, it also bears strong resemblances to certain Monster Hunter elements, which might make the idea feel short of original. Things do, however, get interesting during the gameplay. You explore the Friar base, prepare for upcoming missions, and of course, go on missions. It serves those who enjoy figuring games out for themselves best, and the story, though slow, is solid. Unmetal. Starring the falsely accused and imprisoned Jesse Fox, Unmetal delivers a comedic take on the Metal Gear Solid series. The game plays out in the form of a narration by Fox himself during an interrogation as he describes his escape from prison, <laughs> and then some, in an exaggerated, witty manner. From its beginning to its end, the game pays homage to the Metal Gear Solid franchise, and Fox himself seems to resemble the crazy snake clone. Unmetal is highly underrated. The parodical take on the MGS series with its cheesy dialogues might have been well received by hardcore fans, but that's okay. You need not be a Metal Gear Solid fan to enjoy this one, and it's guaranteed to crack you up. What makes it special is that even though it's a parody, the game manages to show character. Players solve inventory-based puzzles and make use of Jesse's improv skills, weapons and fighting ability, explosives and DIY gadgets. Lastly, you might feel the need to crank up the brightness to really absorb the well-made pixel art and environments. VV, VV, VV. Yep, that is really what this very, 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 very fun to play platforming puzzle game is called. Trapped in VV, 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 you play as astronaut Captain Viridian, who sets out to rescue his crewmates, scattered across this dimension after a teleporter on the ship malfunctioned. For some reason, maybe the spacesuit is just too heavy, you can't jump. The game does make up for it by letting you take control of whether you gravitate downward or upward, which makes for some interesting gameplay. The goal is to get to all your crew members and uncover the causes behind the malfunction. While you explore the game's captivating retro-looking 2D space world, you must creatively dodge dangerous obstacles and roaming aliens with the help of your gravity-based ability. As you progress, this one also kicks things up a notch by increasing the difficulty level with the help of mechanics like levitating platforms and shifting rooms that move about. The varied level design is said to be genius, and we have highly recommend checking this one out. Trillion God of Destruction Formerly a Vita-exclusive game that later made it to Steam, Trillion God of Destruction combines visual novel storytelling with JRPG mechanics and actually places death as a vital strategic element to deliver this out-of-the-box hybrid that plays with the traditional formula. Players step into a demon-filled underworld, playing the role of Zeobolos, the third ruler of Hell. The story gets interesting when Trillion, a heavenly god known for turning worlds into rubble, sets his sights on taking down Zeobolos. Trillion does exactly what he set out to do, and when Zeobolos dies, a necromancer with the power of the soul Grimoire appears. She offers to bring him back to life on the condition that he must put an end to Trillian's tyranny. During the gameplay, players raise, train, and control the Overlord girls. Every six weeks, Trillian wakes up, and one of your overlords must face him. There's a lot that this grid-based hybrid does differently. For instance, if one of your overlords dies, they die for good and can't be revived. The experience points that this character gained in training go to the next. The equipment, however, is lost. People reject this title over its lack of continuous combat and how much importance it lays on the raising simulator elements. But the planning and thought that's been put into this turn-based battle player and its various systems is genius. Malicious Rebirth Our next title is a Vita port of the PS3 original, with only one gameplay goal in mind kill the enemy. The game doesn't really have levels or a solid story to it, just stages, and players can play these in the order of their choice. 
Each stage throws you right into the midst of a boss fight from the get-go, and the goal is to fight these bosses' keeper minions while also dealing damage to and ultimately killing the big, bad, malicious villains. The format of these games is somewhat similar to the older Mega Man games in the sense that you can beat the boss and clear the stage before you receive power-ups for the next one. The battle mechanics on this hack and slash are centered around the mantle of Cinders, a black cape that transforms into various weapon forms. It bears a little resemblance to weapons in Activision's Prototype series. It loses points because of its negative replayability factor. The camera movements are bad, and the fights are repetitive and frustrating. This one would have benefited from more time in development. For brief bursts of battle, the game is perfect. The environments and enemy designs come with good graphics, and the sound design and aesthetics won't let you down. Rogue Legacy This challenging dungeon Metroidvania platformer slightly resembles Castlevania with the addition of roguelike elements, killing bad guys, dodging obstacles, looting treasure chests, finding upgrade blueprints and equipment is about all there is to it. The game leans more towards combat than it does toward puzzle solving, and the action, though simple, feels smooth. Characters also have an additional mana bar below the health bar, which lets them spend these points on the use of magical abilities. Each dungeon has four bosses, one for every unique environment in the dungeon. This one does things in a shockingly creative way. Leaving the new dungeons aside, when players die, they become a different character class heir of themselves, which makes them have to adapt to the newer characters. The best part of this one is its randomly generated dungeons in every run. However, players do have the ability to save their last dungeons via the Architect, in case they feel the urge to revisit them with a different character. You'll never get tired of this title. Ocean Horn, Monster of Uncharted Seas Ocean Horn is a 3D action adventure title centered around the story of a youth whose father never returns from his quest to recover ancient artifacts and hunt down the legendary Ocean Horn monster. This one makes players explore quite a bit, solving puzzles and fighting enemies as it progresses through various locations. For players who extensively search and loot their environment, this game would be a joyride. This title is often compared to the Legend of Zelda series, and gamers draw a lot of parallels between the two. For example, the game falls short when cinematic storytelling is brought into question, and even by Vita standards. Its graphics could have been a lot better. Though the story is great and the lore runs deep, for the most part, each chapter features one cutscene and the rest of it is just interactions with non-playable characters to guide you on your quest. The presentation is also like a lot of the Zelda titles, with the gameplay following the character at an isometric camera angle. If you can make your peace with the occasional jagged edges and performance issues at the cost of an adventure-filled story, do check this one out. Fantasy Hero Unsigned Legacy Set in an oppressed world, Fantasy Hero Unsigned Legacy follows a narrative where humankind was already on its last leg before things got worse. Bizarre aliens called the Decoders started pouring in from the skies and seized control of the planet, driving the humans away into hiding. The title isn't too demanding in terms of time, the story is pretty routine. Players pick one of four characters, each representing a fighter class. You may play as Mask, the martial arts champion, Ashta, the modern mage, Akres, the sword wheel rogue, or Hall, the ranged weapon shooter. One of this title's numerous shortcomings is its lack of alternate endings, despite having four playable characters paired with its generic story. The level arrangement makes it difficult for this to be a good story. While all quests fit the broad categories of monster killing, escorting, and item finding, they're short in duration and neither have nor need checkpoints. This quality combined with the stressful, fast-paced combat will have gamers on the edge of their seats, and the game also features an upgradable weapon system. Sometimes the disparity between characters and enemy strength is too big, but combat is fun and the battle mechanics are excellent. This title is a great pick for players that appreciate high volumes of action. Puyo Puyo Tetris This unique take on the classic arcade Tetris incorporates Puyo Puyo into its premise. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Puyo Puyo is a tile-matching game where the goal is to fill your opponent's third column from their left side with Puyo to defeat them. Puyo are essentially balls of slimy creatures that drop from the upside of the screen in groups of two, three, or four. These can be rotated, and they pop if you manage to place four or more of one color next to each other. This one is underrated because Tetris isn't everyone's cup of tea. However, the variety of available playing mode shows promise in accumulating a fan following. Puyo Puyo Tetris combines the two games and allows up to four players to play together, irrespective of which mode you choose. The game offers five. In all modes except Fusion and Swap, players can opt for either the Puyo or the Tetris style. The Versus mode lets players compete. They sabotage the opponent's playing field by performing combos. Party mode features power-ups and hindrances, and the highest score wins when the timer runs out. Fusion mode combines both styles, while Big Bang mode combines different modes from both games. The Adventure Story Mode 
Tokiden Kiwami Omega Force's Tokiden Kiwami serves as an enhanced Vita version of the base Tokiden game. It's twice as long as the original Tokiden and packs all the content from the base game and then some. The plot is centered around an unnamed protagonist whose homeworld now faces the risk of annihilation at the hands of the Oni demons. While the Slayers have protected mankind for centuries and drove all demons away in the past, a space-time catastrophe causes certain demon-infested locations to reappear on the map. This third-person Monster Hunter-like title is surely worth a look, given the fact that there aren't enough Monster Hunter titles available on the Vita. So Kaden Kawami is better than most Demon Slaying games available, thanks to Omega Force's expertise in the hack and slash genre. When it came out in 2015, games were rolling out with unreal graphics and designs. This one gave handheld gamers hope, proving that you could have PS3 level graphics on a device as small as the Vita. The cinematics, sound, menus and mechanics all seem perfect on the Vita. The degree of customization it offers and its immersive battles with comprehensive mechanics make it an underrated gem. Titan Souls The premise of Titan Souls is the existence of a cosmic source responsible for giving life to the universe. This source exists between our world and the worlds beyond with the idle titans as its protectors. Players assume the role of an ambitious, nameless warrior who sets out to kill the titans and take their power for himself using only a single, indestructible arrow. The 2D, top-down perspective feels like a nod to older Zelda titles. Titan Souls is quite fun and can also quench your thirst for a good challenge. The players not only have one arrow that they must charge up by staying still during a moving titan's rampage, but they also have just one life. There are no stronger or weaker titans, but each has its attack style or patterns that players must crack and dodge while their arrow charges. While it comes under fire for demanding patience, since players will die often, it's widely praised for its high replay value, boss variety, and environment design. 1001 Spikes Up next, we have another retro 2D adventure platformer that takes players through challenging, spike-filled, obstacle-heavy terrain. The story, though not very significant in comparison to the fun gameplay that players are in for, follows Aben and Tina Hawkins in their quest to look for their father, archaeologist Jim Hawkins, who went missing on his expedition to Antarctica. This one actually received better-than-average reviews, but it was also described as the kind of title that you get tired of after a while. This doesn't seem fair, given that most games of the genre get repetitive after a while, and there's only so much the developers can do with the format. There's a great number of levels, multiplayer modes, and new characters to unlock. It's the simple little things that make this title a fun experience, and it's really well crafted. Breach and Clear Developed by Matty Rabbit Studios and published by Gun Media, this title is known for being among the rarest and costliest Vita physical releases. The action-packed strategy RPG takes the form of a grid-based special ops simulator and lets players choose a real-world squad like the US Army Rangers, UK SAS, Germany's KSK, and more. The objective here is to, spoiler alert, breach and clear the room. The game offers heaps in terms of customization. You tailor every teammate's weapons, armor, tactical moves, and packs. It also features consumables like drones or explosives. The combat in this grid type plays out in phases and has its players considering in-depth actions like what entry point an operator breaches from, where they move to, and what directions they scan as they move. After the players are done with the planning phase, they hit the breach button, and all operators start working. The players then plan for phase two, and so it goes until your operators either clear the room or die trying. Die-hard military or strategy game fans might enjoy this title, though it doesn't perform very well on the Vita. The control mechanics feel a little uncomfortable. That and the graphics aren't the best, but the game feels like a great pastime for those seeking a once-in-a-while special ops experience. Neon Chrome Yet another title enjoyed from a top-down camera view, Neon Chrome is essentially a cyberpunk shooter with certain roguelike traits. In its dystopian setting lies the Overseer, who has brought about an authoritarian regime. The big bad rules from the comfort of the top floor, in an arcology, which is a huge self-sufficient tower characterized by a large number of residents and modern technology. Gamers are made to control remote-controlled clones of various humans in the quest to put an end to the Overseer's rule. Each clone has its abilities and belongs to a particular character class. The twin-stick shooter places you in procedurally generated levels amid destructible environments as you fight and make your way up the arcology. Neon Chrome is special mainly due to its level designing mechanisms and brings a solid replay value to the table. While its mechanics are average, the story is a criticized one. The variation in different levels seems inadequate at times. These technical snags are responsible for the bad reviews, but the simple, easy gameplay outshines them. 
arose in the twilight. Set in a castle where time and color are nowhere to be found, arose in the twilight follows a little girl who mysteriously wakes up in the castle to find a curse attached to her waist. This curse gives her the ability to interact with parts of the castle by passing and absorbing blood to and from them. She makes the acquaintance of a giant, and together the two explore the castle, solving puzzles and uncovering its deepest secrets. The peril-filled title is one that places strategic value on death. In the castle, Rose discovered that she's immortal and is reborn from flowers scattered across the castle each time she dies. This game, with the rose and its thorns set as a metaphor, is a masterpiece. The bleak gothic atmosphere of the castle and the game's more grim elements contrast beautifully with its beautiful story. This underrated low on dialogue title tends to seem dull at first glance, but is, in all definitions of the phrase, a must play. AW Phoenix Fester. Combining the elements of a light action RPG and a dating simulator, AW Phoenix Fester lets players jump into the Asterisk War. To those unfamiliar, which might just be most viewers since AW is barely recognized outside Japan, the Asterisk War is a light novel turned anime. The game is a tie in title and lets players step into the shoes of Ayato Amagiri in exploring the Phoenix Fester arc. The game feels poorly balanced due to the heavy focus on romancing elements. The tie in feels like it tries too hard not to be it tie-in, and the combat often looks like it was developed on a very tight budget. Aside from these, Phoenix Fester does a fairly good job at catering to the anime novel fans. This is why it's underrated. Even though more of the gameplay is dating than combat, it still does a decent job at combining visual novel elements with its action RPG gameplay. Invisimals – The Alliance Having originally started its journey in 2009, the Invisimals franchise focuses heavily on augmented reality. Players set out on their journey to hunt the Pokemon-like Invisimals. These invisible animals can only be spotted using your Vita camera and pointing it at the trap. You can hunt, capture, raise, and battle with a collection of the 140 classic and new Invisimals. With its cross-play feature and the way it makes use of the Vita's features in general, it's quite an innovative title. One of its major shortcomings lies in its declining ability to engage players after they're done with the story. After this point, there isn't much else to see for those who aren't interested in adding all Invisimals to their collection. Way too ahead of its time, Invisimals walked so Pokemon Go could run. Nonetheless, for the era it was released during, Invisimals The Alliance is a great buy and keeps younger players engaged. Marvelous Verdict To conclude things, an underrated platform would obviously give rise to a good number of underrated exclusive titles and an even better number of underrated non-exclusive titles. Somewhere along their journey, these titles got old and fell through the cracks. But this doesn't go to say that these games didn't age like fine wine. The classics hold a special corner in the hearts of many, and each of these games, with all their tidbits, their highs and lows, has something to offer. As members of the gaming community, it'd be downright negligent of us to let these gems slip through our fingers without giving, at the very least, a few of them a go. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.